Hello and welcome back to Elden Ring the Ultimate Guide Part 33. Today it is Moonlight Altar and we're also going to be finishing Rani's quest. If this is the first time you've watched any of these videos in the series then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description below. If you have any tips of your own, stick them in the pin tips comments so people can look over extra tips for the episode. But we have changed up our equipment a little bit for this episode right at the start because this is going to help us kill this dragon that we're about to fight. We've got the Great Lance on and we've equipped it with the Spectral Lance Ash of War. And that's all you need. And this is going to be the supreme method. The greatest method for fighting these dragons. Nothing is going to come close. Fuck these dragons, they're irrelevant now. But it's specifically the dragons that look like the wyvern-esque looking dragons. Not the the big dragons that uh, like Lannisax or whatever. So, so yeah, two legs, not four. Yes. So what we're going to do is, I mean, we don't even really need to prepare quite as much as like we have. All we need to do, lock on its head, have the Great Lance out, and three spectral lances to the face will knock this thing on its ass. Bang. Done. Now, you can just whip out your Great Stars and go to fucking town on its face. As you'll see, we build up Bleed. We would have been building up Frostbite, but I think we have both infused for Bleed at the minute. Um, also, I think Adula resists Frostbite because he deals Frostbite. But Almost that was certainly. two. That's three. He's down again. This works on every Wyvern type dragon. Um, oh, the Mimic's using Rotten Breath. That's nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> a little bonus rot build up there. Uh, so, sorry for the, the wonky uh, footage. So, that was actually run one. I wanted to show you that actually this is a good method. Um, this. This second run here is a little bit less, um, it went a little bit less good, and that is purely down to variance, just, you know, a slight animation, and, because sometimes you can miss the face, and then it's built up enough, uh, poise to not get knocked. So, as you can see, it is three to the face, just for whatever reason, it took, like, six there. But the good news is that Spectral Lance does allow you to just stay out the way of it. And you can get so much damage, and look at that. Oh! Fantastic. in one combo, basically. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, this is to try and mitigate the fact that these things have really wonky animations a lot of the time. I mean, look at this. It's just, it's just everywhere. So something I think I should mention about this strategy is we've had the ability to do this since Rey Lucaria. Yes. Um, so retroactively, any dragon we've fought like this dragon... Um, up to this point, we should have been doing this method. But Which it was only at this... Go on. There's only been one dragon, I think, strictly speaking, which is... Um, is Ezix. Oh, yeah, Exix, the rock dragon in Caelid. Yes, I think that's the only one. And we did technically show you the method for that, but, like you said, we have had the ability to do that. Now, we've got three dragon hearts and a Dula's Moonblade. Uh, for our efforts. And uh, there's a couple of other small items we're going to pick up before Rani. Now, what does Adula's Moonblade do? So, Adula's Moonblade is kind of similar to um, the Soul Greatsword from Dark Souls, in that you summon a big blade and slash with it. But you can chain cast Adula's Moonblade, so you can slash multiple times. It fires a projectile. So it can hit from a range, and it also builds up frostbite. It is a very potent sorcery. Um, it does sound so good. if you are going an intelligence build, yeah, it's one that sort of lives in your tool belt. And if something's weak to frostbite, it's weak to magic damage, and it's far away. That is your go-to tool. So hopefully you noticed in those runes we um, rolled into the floor, which opened up the secret staircase that led to Somber Smith and Stone Eight. But we are now in the chapel. And we're picking up all these starlight shards that are about the floor. Um, so yeah, you can be free to use these because we've done Saluvis's quest. We don't need starlight shards anymore to buy his um, puppet spirit ashes. So thus, these are effectively just um, items that you can use. that are consumable and it will restore some of your FP over time. Very useful in that respect. And I believe at this point we'll just be heading into the pit to complete Rani's quest. Yeah, I'm I think not mistaken. so. And by doing this, this will 
give us the capability of getting Rani's ending, which is tied to an achievement, so this quest is quite important to do if you're trying to finish everything in the game. Not but, only uh, that, it gives you one of the weapons required for the Legendary Weapons Trophy. Oh wow, so it's doubly important. Indeed it is. So once you speak spoken to Rani, you become her husbando, she's now your waifu. And I think she gives you the Moonlight Blade? Not moonlight Sword, am I missing that? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. She disappears and then the Dark Moon Great Sword appears where she was sitting. Bosh, there it is. And if you are going a pure intelligence build, that is your great sword. That is the weapon you want to use. It is exceptionally strong. Um, its Ash of War is great. It charges the weapon up so it deals frostbite on top of dealing magic damage. Um, its charged R2s get projectiles as they always have. It's all around a fantastic weapon. So we headed southeast to these ruins. There's uh, some revenants in them. Ugh. But, of course, we do have the Heal Miracle, which allows us to take care of these things like they are nothing. Thank God, because otherwise these things are horrible. So remember, always have Heal on you in case there's a Revenant that pops up. Because you never not know. Only do we have, not only do we have Heal, we now also have more FP. So if we miss one of those Heals, we don't have to hit it with the third one before we use a Blue Flask. We have a bigger window of opportunity because of the longer FP bar now. So if we mess up once, we can still recover. This is true. Uh, in addition to that, we also picked up three somber stone eights. Uh, sorry, three smith and stone eights, not somber ones, just the normal smith and stones. But still, we picked up three smith and stone eights from that chest down the stairs. So now we're heading to these ruins. There's yet another revenant, so we're going to just try and chain heels into it to kill it. And we do get it. Very good. There's really not a lot in Moonlight Altar overall. Uh, it's quite a big area with quite a lot of nothing in it. But it does have a couple of important things, so we do need to go over it. Because obviously Rani's quest is extremely important. And then there's also the uh, there's a Spirit Ash in this area that is quite difficult to get. But we got you. We don't worry, we got the method for you. We got you covered. Yeah, we have that shit on lock. You're getting the Cerulean Amber Medallion plus two. That gives you increased FP. Funny, really, because you can get this far earlier than you can get the plus one version. You don't get that until Castle Sol in the mountaintops. Oh, that is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, and I think so, that's about it for ruins. I think we're now yeah. on to fighting a trio of basically Glintstone, Dragon, Smarag. You have to fight a boss three times, pretty much. Yeah, and this grace here is the one that we started out at. So we're putting some more into mind. Again, we need to reach, I think it's 27 in order to be able to summon Tish. So, um, that's that's the goal, to get 27. Uh, apparently, we're going to pop a couple of runes in order to uh, be able to level up. Yeah, you might as well go into this triple dragon fight with uh, as few runes to lose as possible. Yeah, um, although, again, with our method, this triple dragon fight is actually surprisingly doable. Um, yeah, thankfully, you can fight them all one at a time. You don't have yes. to fight them all together. If you did, this would be fucking borderline impossible, but thankfully, you don't have to do that. So I absolutely hated this encounter the first time around, and when it came to doing the like the guide with you, I was like, I, like, I don't even, I mean, we were just experimenting, and then you did have the suggestion of try Spectral Lance. Um, and yeah, it just worked out perfectly. On the topic, though, the the Great Lance itself, or I think it's just called the Lance. Um, actually, it's uh, it's actually not a bad weapon at all. It's got a lot of ways to boost its damage. It can accept some really powerful Ashes of War, like Ice Spear, Spectral Lance, as you're seeing, does great damage. It's also an occult Ash of War, meaning um, it will scale with Arcane if you're going for an Arcane build which is nice. Um, yeah, the, the Lance is a very, very good option. It does good stance damage. As you can see, though, these dragons are not a problem with this method. No, no, no absolutely not. Two cycles, and it's gone. This is the only one, I think, that will give you any trouble because of this big sloped rock. Um, it can fly away from you and then land on the rock and just cause you a myriad of problems, but as you can see, it actually can't fit under the rock. 
So when it tries to slam on you here, I don't think it'll reach. Yeah, because it can't get under the rock here. It's too tall. Oh, that was weird. That looked like it missed, but I actually got. I think you hit him in the leg. So honestly, we've got storm collar equipped. That doing a storm collar to this thing's face is maybe better than what I was doing, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, this thing is uh, very dead thanks to this just the best fucking strategy. Like I'm telling you right now, no other cunt has done this. Nobody else has done this. I know one specifically that didn't do this, but. <laughs> <laughs> Or say anything else. <laughs> oh, funny. But, um, yeah, so now we're heading r round again to try and get this thing's to try and get the jump on its head because if you get close to it, it's going to wake up. So we're kind of going to take the take the path around. That way we can get a guaranteed initial hit on its face with uh, with the, the spectral lance. The great thing about Spectral Lance as well is it allows you to just stay outside the range of these things' fucking stomp attacks, which are such a pain in the ass because they keep knocking you on your face. But now we can knock it on his face. Gotta love it. Armic Justice at work. Not where you think you're gone. Bang. <laughs> you were so thrilled with this method. I love it. <laughs> This is this is my favourite thing from the entire guide. Because it's just like it just feels like we've just hacked these fights. Like just completely. Like they, they went yeah. from being an insane pain in the arse to nothing. Free. Literally free. You watched us do it. It was free. We didn't struggle. It's similar to um like when you when you get your like method for beating Melania and you're just like, ah, oh. like, like, it just changes your view of the game entirely. 100%, yeah. And it's so, not even because the dragons are inherently difficult. They're just kind of a pain in the ass to fight. Yeah, they're just annoying, you know. And, like, they take increased damage on the face, so you want to try and, like, get hits to their head. But this just allows you to do it. Now, this red wolf here, um, we are not fighting it. Because uh, not only does it not drop anything, they're a colossal pain in the cunt. So, fuck them. Yeah, advice we've given you in previous parts. Picky fights, and this is one that you can pick, and we pick to not fucking fight. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just so insanely not worth it. It's just so fucking annoying. They just move about so much, you can't hit them, and then they like deal like a disproportionate amount of damage. I'm just, fuck that, man. If it ain't following me, I ain't fighting it. Particularly if it doesn't drop anything, what's, even, what's the point? You know? Where, where's my incentive? Yeah, exactly. I mean, at least the Lion Guardians usually drop, like, at the very least, old Fangs and Beast blood kind of rare crafting materials. Sometimes they drop big smithing stones. So at least that pain in the ass is kind of worth it. One of them drops Lion's Claw. This is true, yeah. Um, so we're here now at one of the final Rise puzzles. Um, it's another three Wise Beasts, but this one's three Great Wise Beasts. And immediately behind the tower... You jump onto this rock here, you'll see big tortoise. And that's why we had the kukris equipped. Because you can hit them from a range and never need to worry about them. And I think we're on our way to the second one of those now, which is quite a way away. Yeah, I think this is probably my least favourite rise puzzle in the game, to be honest. I think that they're just really taking the absolute fucking piss with this one to be honest um there's a turtle that's floating in the air and you have to use a spirit spring to get it i as far as i'm aware like you can see it and like shoot it with a bow and i've tried to find it and i just can't so the only other alternative is to just jump on the spirit spring jump over and over again until you hit it i can confirm that you can hit it with a bow on my parallel run to the guide run where I was testing new things, I was using a great bow at points, and you can hit it with a great bow. I just couldn't I just can't see it with the naked eye. I just couldn't find it. So <laughs> But I do know that like you can hit it by jumping up the spirit spring, so that's just was doing that until I've done it. So yeah, the way big. that you can find these if you're if you are struggling to find them is mm. in areas where they appear you will also see smaller spectral tortoises. Um, 
or rather not spectral tortoises, you'll just see smaller tortoises, like, um, dotted about in the areas where they appear. So that's your clue that you're near one if you are struggling to find them. So we're warping back to the Moonlight Altar Grace because it is definitely faster than running all the way back um, on the back of Torrent. And now we're heading to like the opposite corner of this area, essentially, and that is where uh, the last tortoise is going to be, as well as the Tish boss fight, or the Everjail, rather. Well, I suppose you don't... F but I Technically, you get the summon that is called Tish, but the boss isn't called Tish, but the boss is the summon that you get, so it's, it is Tish, but I don't know. So yes. They're both like the, knife assassins. <laughs> yes. Now, I don't know about you, at no point can I see the tortoise that is apparently, it's, it's like, it has been held up in the air by the spirit spring itself. Um, which is like, kind of cute I guess, but I can't see it, no matter where I looked, so the only way to do it is like you can you kind of hit it with the force of your body as you're getting sent up and um yeah if anybody has like an actual guaranteed every time as soon as you go up the spirit spring method that'd be great stick it in the comments no i can tell you why you couldn't see it why because you fast traveled oh my god is that it's still there why? but it's invisible yep Oh, that's why. Mm hmm Okay, well, if you don't fast travel and come back, you might be able to see it where you're, you just shoot it with an arrow. Okay, so now we're going to be doing this boss fight. And now we're going to be doing a, that's an incredible method, right? So we have to put on the, I think it's either the, the Faith Talisman or the Int Talisman that allows us to cast Black Flame Blade. Now we have Storm Collar equipped, so we're going to put Black Flame Blade on and cast Stormcaller, and this fucking melts this boss. Now, if anybody else has tried to fight this guy, you'll know that he is a colossal pain in the ass. He dodges all your attacks. He can't be... Uh, he can't be frostbitten, but, you know, can't be uh, rotted, can't be bled. Um, dodges all your projectile attacks, has a huge health pool, does a ton of damage. But the thing is, is that Stormcaller seems to get around all of this. Because it seems like he can't tell when you're Stormcallering in order to dodge the attack. So you can actually time the Stormcaller when he's coming to you and let him essentially walk into your Stormcaller, as you can see. And this is by far, by far the best method for fighting this boss that I've found personally. Maybe you've got your own method, and by all means stick it in the comments. But for this particular build, this is absolutely the way to go. We are also leveraging the fact that Lionel's armor set has a lot of poise, meaning it's hard for enemies, including bosses like the Black Knife Ringleader here, um, to knock you out of your attack animations, and that includes Stormcaller. So even if it manages to hit you, you can just trade with Stormcaller, and you will get six or seven hits guaranteed and it only got one. And every time we hit it with Stormcaller, we get 1% of our health back. This is true. And not only that, when we have Black Flame Blade, it does a, a little bit of a percentile damage tick against Electo. Um, and then, really the only thing with this fight now that you have to worry about is um, just avoiding the... Uh, the Dest I don't know if it's the Destined Death attack. Um, but the, the, the red beam attack that drains a whole bunch of your health. You were right, it is Destined Death. That's the only attack that you now need to worry about. And as you saw it so many times, he just ran into our Stormcaller. And trying to fight him with any any other strategy, he will dodge so many of your attacks, but for whatever reason, Stormcaller, just because of its big, wide, round hitbox, just gets caught in it and then just battled to death. And again, you can just stack the damage up with Black Flame Blade. And absolutely no bother. I had so much issues with Electo when I was using the Curved Swords or the Katanas. But with this, no issue at all. We were rewarded with Black Knife Tish, the Spirit Summon, as you'd said. Um, she's a Black Knife Assassin, she can deal dust and death. She's probably the second best summon in the entire game. Correct. And here we're getting Rani's Dark Moon, that is one of the better sorceries in the game. And it 
turns you into a big ball, fires that big ball at an enemy. If it hits the enemy, they get debuffed and take increased magic damage, as well as a bunch of frostbite buildup. So, what we want to do is we're going to warp back to Rani's Rise, and then we're going to put Ground Slam back on, or indeed Lion's Claw, as we went over. You can use Lion's Claw instead. Lion's Claw would probably be better slightly for it, as we're about to do. But if you remember the Baleful Shadow that we fought in Noxtella, well, that was Blyde, and now we actually have to fight Blyde as part of Rani's quest, because obviously he's fucking pissed off or something. So here he is, here's Blyde, and um, just like the Baleful Shadow, really, Ground Slam, or Lion's Claw, is the way to kill this guy. He's actually really, really difficult if you're not using Ground Slam. Um, and he actually killed me, the Baleful Shadow killed me, Blyde killed me, but with Ground Slam, it makes him so trivial. Because his attacks are really fast, he deals a ton of damage, he's really aggressive, but see if he's put on his ass, he isn't doing any of that shit. So if this guy, if Blyde couldn't be flattened with Ground Slam, he would be insanely difficult, to be honest. Yeah. He would have been more difficult than everything else we've fought in this video. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. By, uh, by a significant margin as well. Oh, there's his bite attack. That. Yeah, that does a decent chunk of damage. It's also a brutal animation. Good god. Yeah. There's actually a huge amount of enemies in this game that if they couldn't be flattened or affected by Ground Slam, they would be a genuine problem. But, thankfully, he can be flattened. So thus, he isn't a problem. And we get the Royal Greatsword and Blythe's armor set. So we married Rani, came and put her dog down, because we're allergic, I guess. And now we're going to go talk <laughs> yeah. to her best friend. And then, uh, once we tell him of the fact that we just shot Blythe in the back of the head, we took him out back, he was rabid. Um, we're gonna rest at a grace, or in our case, warp, and then he's killed himself. Um... Uh-oh, stinky. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> and for that we get Aegis Bell Baron and the, um, the mirror helm or something like that. Yeah, it's not very good, don't waste your, uh helmet slot on it. But we also got the Royal Great Sword from Blythe. Um, that is, I believe, a Colossal Sword. And it has the Wolf's Assault Flip and Frostbite Explosion attached to it, which is a very cool Ash of War. It doesn't hit very often in PvE, uh, PvE, but when it does hit, it does a massive amount of Frostbite buildup and a huge amount of damage. It's very good in that respect. So, upgrading our weapons, and then we sold our runes, because it's easier than popping them. And then we're going to level up, hopefully. We get a little bit more mind. Sick, let's go. Uh, so, that's only enough for one level, Jesus. But that is it for this part, pretty much. Um, yep, part 33, there's the there's the build stats. I guess we're just putting it back. Because, uh, because we're still not level 140, we're still using the gold scarab. But once you get to level 140, that is the level we stop at. But otherwise... That is it for part 33. And okay, there we go. That's Moonlight Oliver. Done. Join us in part 34, where we're going to be doing Deep Root Depths. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.